Greetings, everybody. I am Lobo, and welcome to Luna. This is episode 178 of my Minecraft survival series, and last episode we're working over here at Wharf, and I was actually really tempted to just keep rolling with it, trying to get a little bit more of this done, but we're in no rush. We're in no rush, and I want to get some variety in our, in our content, right? So we're going to start a new project today. It's a new project, but a project in an area that you guys are familiar with. Of course, I'm talking about the approach here. Now, we've done a lot of work to the middle approach, and we finished off most of the far approach as well, but there is one area of the approach we haven't really touched yet, and that is, uh, I guess, the near approach, this little island over here, right outside the entrance to Luna. This is going to be the site of today's project. And guess what? We're finally doing something with these little circular, almost circular shapes that we drew in here. I don't know how long ago, uh, but these were initially intended to be towers, right? On either side of this bridge, kind of framing the Grand Rotunda, our entrance into Luna. But I am thinking now that these might be a little bit small for what I intend and also not quite positioned in the right place. So let me go ahead and redraw this before we actually get around to building anything. So, I mean, these aren't going to be super huge, just slightly bigger than what we had drawn in here before. Uh, but also, I want them to be centered alongside that main platform. That way, when we have walkways leading up to this thing, it doesn't look, you know, super awkward or anything. So, pretend this scaffolding is the wall of our tower. It's just like a quick visualization so you can see why I'm doing what I'm doing. So, we can see the inner walls of where our towers are going to be, right? And if we're approaching Luna from right here, you can see that the towers are going to hide a lot of Luna. You're not going to be able to see it until you move on to this bridge, and that kind of reveals, like, the full scale of Luna. You can see how big it actually is. But as you're first approaching, all you really see is the Grand Rotunda, right? So, this build, the towers being placed where they are, it's all going to be about this reveal right here. Now, before we start building the towers, I was noticing that the far wall of this tower comes pretty close to this piece of land over here, which I really don't actually want to exist. So first things first, we're going to get rid of that. And just so you guys know exactly which piece of land I'm talking about, it's this peninsula right over here. Basically, I want everything from this river right here inwards towards Luna to be gone. I want Luna itself to be surrounded by water. And as you can see, this peninsula kind of infringes upon Luna's space a little bit. So yeah, I mean, we already have our borders pretty much drawn out for us. So before we can actually get around to erasing this particular piece of land, I do need to prepare it first, which means first putting down a bunch of torches, kind of torch spamming over this place, since we are going to be working here throughout the night, or to be more exact, throughout many nights. All right, I think that should be good. I mean, there's probably still spawnable spots over here, but it's, it's well enough lit up that we're not going to get overwhelmed by mobs, I don't think. Now, vanishing an entire peninsula, this seems to me to be prime time-lapsing material, which means we are going to have to call Wolfred over here using the interdimensional inanimate object transmitter. Now, he did specify that we're only supposed to contact him in cases of emergency, and he seems to be under the impression that time-lapses aren't actually an emergency. So we're going to keep this very business-like. I wrote him, Wolfred Wolfens, co-founder, lol. As per our previous conversation, I am only writing to notify you of essential law business. Law supporters, which is you guys, and leadership, which is me, require an updated progress report regarding the captured decoy robot. Due to security concerns, this report should be delivered to me personally from a top scaffolding while I do grindy stuff. Any pertinent information will be relayed to law supporters in the current Luna episode. And I think that should get him over here. It seems official, right? Seems official. And let's say if we have him atop scaffolding, kind of shouting his progress report down to us, if he's going to be looking at us from atop scaffolding anyway, and I'm going to be doing grindy stuff anyway, we might as well get a time lapse done, right? So at this point, we'll just wait for Wolford to make his way over here, put on a little bit of music, and get to work.
Welcome back, everybody, and would you look at that water? That is a beautiful sight. We are one step closer to putting Luna on an island. We still have a lot more to go, but at least this side of Luna is done. This side of Luna is surrounded by water. Now the water is going to be much deeper than this. Um, in this one spot right here, it's going to be much deeper. No, uh, we're actually going to carve out a lot of this eventually, get some actual depth in here. But right now, we're just basically getting a template in for where our land is going to be, where our water is going to be, and all that stuff. Now, of course, I do fly around and just kind of see how everything's looking. And I noticed that from over here, particularly, I really like the view, you know? You can see, like, a lot of Luna from this point, And also, you can see as far as Wharf looking that way. So, yeah, I was thinking that eventually it might be a good idea to get, like, kind of a tall build with a scenic view over here. So what I did was I kind of just marked out this location and, and put a note that said put in a tall build with a scenic view. So that will be coming eventually. Uh, but we're not working on that today. We are working over at the approach as we've previously discussed oh and for those of you guys following what's been going on you're probably wondering what wolford had to say about decoy dog would you look at that that doesn't even go into the water i guess we didn't really need to remove all that land here just yet but you know it had to happen eventually so we got it you're probably wondering what wolford had to say about decoy dog and basically what he said was I should have given him a little bit more time. He's close to making progress, and he will have an actual update for us before the end of this episode, which, uh, I, I buy all my blocks that I just placed. Oh my goodness, why, can I, can I pick some of this stuff up, please? The lag in this area is so, so bad. I need to go turn some of my farms off. Um, okay, uh, what was I saying? Basically, it's a, it's a don't call him, he will call us type of situation, and that's fine. That's fine, so long as he realizes that the clock is ticking until we need another time lapse. Now, as far as our block palette for these towers, it's gonna to be the same block palette we used for Luna's walls. So we're gonna need some stone, we're gonna need andesite, we're going to need cobble. Uh, right now, I'm looking for spruce and oak. This, by the way, is that peninsula that we just took out. So we collect all the stuff, threw it in these chests over here, and right now, I am looking for this right here. And just to clarify why we're going to use the block palette we're going to use is it's because like I view all this stuff as one build like the entrance bridge into Luna the main entrance Luna the Grand Rotunda all the walls surrounding Luna they're all using the same block palette because they're all the security features to Luna right so basically the watchtowers we're going to build today that's all part of this and this is all part of the same build as far as I'm concerned. Oh, and for those of you that keep asking about the Waterside District, I'm going to go ahead and address this in a video so I don't do it in the comments anymore, even though I probably will get comments about this anyway. Uh, for those of you that keep asking, when am I going to start building in the Waterside District? There's a lot of other stuff I want to get done first. And also, right now, I'm using the Waterside District for other purposes, so it's going to be a while. Now, I think I'm finally ready to get started building. I'm going to use scaffolding once again to kind of help you guys visualize what I'm thinking this is going to look like. So imagine that's more or less the height of it. It's going to be three levels, basically. Uh, it's going to have two balconies above the ground floor. So imagine these little protrusions of scaffolding being like balconies that go all the way across. Um, I think that is probably a good height for it to kind of frame Luna. And I think as far as getting these towers built, we're going to work on one together, make all the design choices, get all the kinks worked out of it, and then we'll find an excuse to bring over Wolfrid to time-lapse the other one. Uh, this floor is probably going to be more like this style rather than just spruce, like the pathway leading up to it. Right now, though, I'm just trying to get, get like a rough idea of, uh, you know, where everything's going to be, how everything's going to be situated and stuff. I think uh, this tower is the one we're going to start working on together. Now, I want to go ahead and, and start getting some block variation in this because we're going to carry this design up, right? And I don't have to go back through and have to knock out blocks like I'm doing right now. We'll just build them in as we go up. So along the bottom, we'll add some mossy. We'll pepper in some cracked stone brick as well as we go up just to get that bit of block variation in there, have it look a little bit more interesting. And also, in the interest of adding interest to this build, we're going to want to play with depth as well. So we're going to have some areas that are kind of protruding from the build, other areas that are kind of recessed into it. Now, speaking of depth, one thing I want to start using more are walls. I want to start using walls as my walls more because they do already have that depth built into them, right? And we can add full blocks like right next to them and we have already bits that are recessed, bits that are protruding. And also with the oak there, it adds a bit of structure to this as well. It shows how the upper parts of the tower are actually being held up on the outside as well as on the inside. 
So we just carry that the whole way around and there we have the basic shape of the first floor of our tower now in. But I do want to go ahead and add some windows, just kind of break up the monotony of this a little bit. So I think we'll go ahead and I was going to say use fences. Uh, because I don't want to use glass on these. I was going to say use fences, but since it doesn't connect, uh-uh, no, negative. We're not, we're not doing, we're not doing that. Maybe if we were to recess it a little bit, maybe that would look a little bit better because that does connect to the oak logs. And I think that's, yeah, that's more or less what I was, what I was hoping it would look like. So yeah, again, adding a bit of depth, it helps in more ways than one, right? So we'll go ahead and frame this with some stairs on the top and bottom right there. And that should make it so we don't, it doesn't look super out of place on the outside here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's much better. That, that gets a stamp of approval. So once I get this in, we should have a pretty good idea of where to go with this build moving forward because we got the entire first floor in and the transition up into the second level as well. So we'll go ahead and take a step back and just see what we actually think of it so far. I'm thinking it looks pretty good. It goes with this, except for one thing I'm realizing, we have a bit of color in this though. We got the blue glass with the leaves behind it, so kind of like that. But I don't want to add any glass to this, but I do think, I do think we probably need to add a little bit of color in here somehow. I have an idea. Oh, you know what? I should have missed opportunity. I should have started this clip back there flying over the area that we took out. I have an idea. Maybe Prismarine. Maybe Prismarine will give us the effect that we, uh, we're looking for here. So what I think we're going to do is use the Prismarine as an accent block between the floors, and then we'll go up again using our stone bricks. So this is actually going to bring it up a couple more blocks than I was thinking. Uh, so this tower will probably end up being taller than our little scaffolding template over there, but I don't think that's going to be detrimental at all. I think it might actually work to our benefit, make this build a little bit more grand, a little bit more interesting, make the entrance to Luna a little bit better. Um, so let's go ahead and see what we think of it. Eh, maybe Dark Prismarine. Maybe Dark Prismarine would end up looking a little bit better. I do like that better. I don't know if it goes with that better, but I do just generally like that better. Moving on, let's go ahead and start getting our second floor in here. We're going to start with the balcony. We're going to be protruding this out from the build just a little bit. Again, offering a little bit more depth, and also it's a balcony, so that's pretty much what it should do. What is, what is that down? Is that a little baby sheep? A little baby sheep down there tearing up my lawn. He's hungry. I'm thinking I'm a little hungry too. And then as far as the walls of the second floor go, we're basically going to do the same thing that we did down there on the first floor. So I'm just using that as a template for right now. Um, I guess just to vary things up a little bit, we could make the, the windows a little bit bigger though. So since we're higher up, we can go three tall with our windows rather than two tall. Aside from that though, everything else is just rinse and repeat basically. Um, I do need to figure out how we're going to transition between the floors here. Like if we want to go with ladders or maybe a spiral staircase. Ladders, ladders would uh, enable us to get more floor space in here though, which could be beneficial. Rinse and repeat. I said rinse and repeat, didn't I? And I started thinking to myself after I said that, rinse and repeat. Is this build boring? Is this repetitive? And looking at this, it's kind of repetitive. It's going to be kind of repetitive if we make the first floor look like the second floor, which looks like the third floor. Can't have that. So I was thinking, well, how can we change up? How can we vary uh, between the floors? And I was thinking, well, we haven't used our polished andesite yet. We haven't used our chiseled stone bricks yet. So we could do something potentially kind of like this, uh, where we have our, you know, first floor kind of dominated, surrounded by these, these andesite pillars, right? And then maybe we go a little bit lighter on them as we go up. And that kind of ties in with the Grand Rotunda over here a little bit better. It kind of ties in with the walls of Luna a little bit better as well. I think something like that could work. I think we're going to recess those pillars in another block as we go up to the second floor. So the second floor is actually going to be skinnier, like the walls of the second floor will be skinnier than the first floor. And also we'll be covering up a bit of the, the structural oak right there as well. So that'll make things look a little bit different too. I think that, yeah, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So now that we have our second floor exterior sorted out, we need to figure out how we're going to transition to the third floor. So you can see this border between the floors right here on the inside of the andesite pillars. I think up here, transitioning from the second to third floor, that border is going to be on the outside of the andesite pillars with the pillars kind of disappearing behind it. 
Additionally, I think we're going to just forget about the balcony on the third floor as well. And we're going to have the stairs facing inwards rather than outwards with some slabs over here just to maintain that depth over the prismarine. Now, because we won't have a balcony, I'm thinking we maybe have the third floor just be a little bit more open. So maybe we forget about the walls and just have our structural like oak pillars running up straight up from the bottom, at least appearing to be one solid piece from the outside, right? And that leaves us with a tower closely resembling a three tier cake. So I think what I'm going to do with the roof, I want to bring the roof out a little bit more. So I'm thinking we might bring it out to the same width as a balcony right here. In fact, we might do it out of spruce to kind of echo the look of the balcony as we transition up into the roof. I think that might be a good idea. Let's ask our llama friends what their opinions are. So spruce on the bottom of the roof, what do you think of that? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming is llama for go for it. So I'm gonna transition into the roof the same way we transitioned into the balcony down there. So this is where I am going to repeat what we did because I'm not against repetition. I just don't wanna to do too much repetition. I think echoing that design up here is going to be going to be good. It's gonna you know, add a level of cohesion to this build. Where it starts to differ is when we add a row of stairs over our fences, which is gonna kind of you know angle into the roof, angle into the pitch of the roof, right? So we're gonna be using the spruce as an accent block, and I think the rest of our roof is going to be constructed of the dark prismarine, so kind of bringing our accent to the forefront a little bit. Ooh, we are almost there, guys. We are almost there. The next question I need to answer is, what is the pitch of our roof going to be? How steep is this thing going to be? And I'm thinking, Probably pretty steep. Uh, as I'm going in more towards the center, I'm kind of raising the pitch a little bit so that way we get that kind of swooping concave feel to it, right? So uh, we'll go ahead and, and see how, how this is going to work. I think I might be going a little, a little too steep here. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a step back and actually see how this looks. That's the center. So we'll go ahead and make our way over here and just see what we think of that. Ooh, mm, yeah, n negative. No, that's that's too much. That's too much. Maybe something like <laughs> maybe something like this will be a little bit. I calmed it down a little bit. Calmed it down a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. That that feels that feels good. So yeah, we're gonna use the spruce and oak as kind of an accent on all four sides of this roof, and then we're gonna fill in all the remaining spaces in between the wood with the dark prismarine. All right, so I just got basically a quarter, uh, activate wings. <laughs> I, got a, I got a quarter of the roof in. I wanna see how it looks before we get the rest of it filled in. I can already tell you, I like that. I am a big fan of that. Why do I still have this totem on me? I've had this on the entire episode blocking out so much of the screen. I'm sorry, guys, but yeah, we're rolling with it. All right, so we are almost done with this tower. I'm pretty happy with the way it's turning out, and we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing to the other tower that we're going to be building here in a little bit. Um, I have been toying with the idea of maybe doing a little bit more than that, though. I've been thinking about maybe connecting the towers with some kind of archway or uh, walkway that goes in between the upper floors of the towers. It's it's a possibility. I'm kind of leaning in that direction right now. What 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 was that? No. That. Now, I know it hasn't been that long, but I do think it's about time to go ahead and contact Wolfer and get him back over here because, despite what he says, I think he secretly enjoys the company. Hello. Um, case in point, I think he wrote to us first this time, which is cool. All right, uh, Lobo. Decoy Dog's tracking and broadcasting systems have been rendered inoperable. This means Wolfen's labs will no longer be able to track him. Hey, good news. All right. Excellent. Unfortunately, due to the damage he has sustained, thanks to you, me, his hard drive has been corrupted. I have removed it and installed a new operating system of my own devising. This means you may now use Decoy Dog to monitor your inane building while I work to recover the data on the corrupted drive. Um, this, I'm sure you will agree, should minimize the loss of productivity and rising tensions in our organization as you now have no reason to contact me. In any case, other than emergency, you may find Decoy Dog in the hideaway. Wolfred Wolfens. Um, I don't know what tensions he's talking about. I haven't sensed any rising tensions or anything like that. Uh, but I guess now we have our own robot. Law has its own robot who hopefully doesn't retain any of his previous program. I'm sure Wolfred knows what he's doing. He's like an expert in that kind of stuff. He really didn't enjoy the company, huh? Okay, well, 
Anyway, where where is where is this robot guy again? He's uh in the hideaway. Okay, I know where that is. This seems a little bit risky. I mean, I guess what Wolford's thinking is what better place to hide something from Wolfen's Labs than to hide it in Wolfen's Labs right under their noses, right? But it still seems a little bit risky. We just need to hurry up and make sure nobody sees us. We'll make sure to close the hatch behind us. This is the hideaway. This is where Wolford used to leave books for us back in the day, providing some very useful information. Apparently, he's left another book for us here. Um, oh, and there he is. Okay, so are these instructions? Don't break him. Those are my only instructions. How do I activate this guy? You you look different. You, he's already activated. He's turned on. He's got some upgrades from what it seems. New wardrobe, new pants as well. Hi. This uh, this seemed like such a better idea not too long ago. Like having my own robot. Yeah, cool. And then now you're here and I'm like, wow, this is scary. You know what? I don't even know what I'm so worried about. I doubt Wolfred would ever intentionally put me in danger. So, yeah, I'm happy to have Decoy Dog with us here in the approach for his first official time lapse as a member of LOL. At this point, why don't we go ahead and put on a little bit of music and get to work. Welcome back! <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, and you can see the towers right behind me, but we're not going to look at them just yet because we were talking about reveals earlier, right? So I want to go ahead and show you guys the reveal of the towers. 
So imagine we first come into Luna, right? We're checking out the Welcome Center. We walk through the far approach, up the path to the actual approach. And as we enter the approach, this is where we'll get our first glimpse of those towers. You can see them rendered just off in the distance, the furthest thing that we can clearly see from here. And yeah, I think that's really cool. I would love to pretend that this was, you know, all intentional, but really the extra height that we ended up adding to the towers as we were building really helped sell this. You know, that they kind of go away for a little while, but we know which direction we're heading. And every now and then those towers will just kind of peek out as kind of a waypoint, but we won't get a clear glimpse of the towers. We won't really get a good idea of what we're really looking at until we get up close. And I think that is actually a super cool effect. See, even right here, we can see it, but we're not really sure what we're looking at. It looks like just one tower, right? We don't really know what the structure is. Not until we get over kind of towards this way. This is when we can start putting the pieces together as we round this corner over here. Now we can see, oh, there's two towers over there. Cool, let's make our way a little bit further up. But see, even here, we don't get a clear glimpse of it. We don't get like a good idea of how they actually look. Oh, and before we go any further, I, I did uh, go ahead and dress out the rest of these platforms right here. Uh, they're not completely done. They're not completely done. Like, as you can see over here, the landscaping, I need the landscaping to happen first before we can actually, you know, build the, build the structures down and make everything look good. Uh, but I didn't actually intend to fall off here. So let's get back on the path that we were on and pretend like we never actually left it. So. As we round this final corner up to Luna, you can now see what the towers actually look like, but you cannot see really what's going on behind them, right? That looks super cool. I like this. I like this little archway here, especially. I think that was a good choice. I'm glad we added that. But this is the reveal that I really want to show you guys, the reveal of the Grand Rotunda as we move under that archway. You can see everything kind of opens up and we, we as we enter Luna. I think that was really cool. So yeah, I'm overall pretty happy with how this looks. You can see like the underside of the archway. Let me go ahead and just show you guys around. You saw the towers themselves. We can go ahead and look at the interiors because we did get those done as well. Um, I was almost lazy with this, by the way. I almost went with like a, pl a plain, like flat spruce slab floor. I'm glad I decided to do this. So it adds a little bit to it. Just having the ceiling kind of bow up towards the center. We did basically the same for every floor here. Uh, we added some candles for lighting up. Uh, this was this was the actual rinse and repeat portion of this build. We might add some more stuff in here later just to kind of, you know, help it out a little bit. Oh, I don't have a jump boost. I want to go check out the other tower too. And we could do that by walking across the walkway from the second floor here. So we'll just make our way out this door, close that up for safety. And yeah, so these towers are joined. We can walk from tower to tower. And this tower is basically identical to the first one over here. So, I mean, it's not, not too much variation aside from like the block variation. That's pretty much all there is. Now, before we end off this episode, I do want to go ahead and clean up my mess. And the reason why I'm telling you guys that is because, well, I'm more likely to actually clean up the mess if I mention it <laughs> on camera. Oh my goodness, fortune pick, why do I even have you? Now, just to review, we had two projects today, knocked them both out. First and foremost, we got rid of the peninsula that was over here. That was the big project for today. And eventually we'll come back in, we'll get the shoreline dressed up, add some depth to the water. You will never even know that it was there, right? The second project today was the approach towers over here. Slightly smaller project, but this actually makes it look like we accomplished something. Anyway, I do think that is going to do it for us today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please be sure to hit that little thumbs up button because that would mean a whole lot to me. And if you want to see more, please remember to subscribe. But as always, I just want to thank you guys for hanging out today. I deeply appreciate it. And until next time, I am Lobo, and I will see you guys later.